and welcome to our co- podcast, Geeks Are Wired, where we talk about video games, movies, TV, comic books, technology, and TLDR, the Internet of Things. And this week, we have Anna. Hello. And Jordan. That's me. And Bill, which is me. Hey, Bill. Hello. What's up? Uh, we have a Patreon page. And at $1 donation, you can chat with us on Discord. And I post little Snapchat-like things that Patreon has. That's interesting. It Tell keeps. me more. <laughs> and except for Luddites like Jordan, That's who me. won't get on. <laughs> but he can still hop on a computer because he has an account. But the rest of us, it's on our phones. We'll chat. We chat about things coming up on the podcast. That's fun stuff. Plus, you can get access to the podcast early for five dollars. Actually, and it helps support us so we can, you know, keep going because well, this is all to, out of my pocket. I hate to burst your bubble, but I actually don't have an online presence. I <gasps> pay someone to serve as my online doppelganger and do ah. all that. So Facebook thinks that they have me, but in fact, they just have a poser. Oh, look at that. It's a nice little segue. That's right. Into Facebook. And again, people have figured out Facebook knows you better than you know yourself. Or your poser. They know who your po- that your poser is, not you. They match your voice. They listen to the podcast. So does Google. So does the KGB, the NSA, FBI. What other uh, ABC, including that uh, which is a real company? <laughs> well, it's a good thing I had voice alteration surgery. Oh, we altered your voice during the podcast. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you didn't even post about your. Uh, you know, you didn't post on another social media that you should delete your Facebook profile, you're saying. Thinking about doing... Oh, yeah. Oh, did you... So you guys heard about this, though? Mm-hmm. Uh, of course. That it was found out that Facebook gathers massive amounts of information on you, and they know who to make your friends with, because if you go to, off to a conference, your Facebook goes, hey, we saw you at a conference. So were these people, and I bet you met them. And lo and behold, more than likely you did meet because they, they figured out all the the information about you and these people. And then they you know targeted ads. They can sell to whoever. But people are like, no, how dare you? Well, actually, the worst part was that the company that Facebook works with, their information was leaked. And 50 million users information is leaked which i think would piss off facebook more than anybody else like all that money they didn't get <laughs> yeah i would think so bill it's personally embarrassing for me because i i worry that they'll discover that for like 6 months straight i had been stalking kit thorne's facebook page for a while under the impression that he was the famous actor rip thorne Ooh. of beastmaster fame so, yeah, I, that is a blunder, and they may know that now. I bet they do. I bet they did. Yeah. Because you were searching it. I it was, was over and over again. Mm-hmm. I was like, every day, sometimes multiple times a day, Kip Thorne, and I'm like, why is this, what's this obsession with black holes? I mean, why not more Beastmaster posts? Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, then I figured it out. I bet if you have asked Facebook about the information, they would have went, hey, I think you're looking at the wrong person. We have all this information about who you want to look for. Yeah. yeah. And it only costs you, like, small bits of money. So if people <laughs> actually stalk each other on Facebook, would this be considered Facebook actually stalking people? Well, except for you're giving this information to Facebook. So it's not really stalking when you bring the stalkers along. Like, hey, hop in the car. Let's go somewhere. <laughs> Come with me. Come with me. This will be fun. Hmm. Is, is that really stalking? Doesn't that just mean it's your friends? I guess it de- it depends upon how much you divulge on Facebook in general. Well, the, no, the, uh, with Facebook, because Facebook will pick up a lot of the like the way you search, or you know, plus it's all on a lot of people's smartphones, so it goes it knows where you went. 
uh, Chet, it owns a lot of uh, organs or owns a lot of companies. And if you use Facebook as a login to other apps, it now has data or access to that information too. So you just are inviting it into all these little, you know, parts of your life, and it just learns about it. and it picks up on the cues that you might not be realizing. You know, like when your friends, when you're like you look, you kind of look weird or do something odd, and your friend, you don't have to say anything. Your friend's like, "Hey, that that's that's that." You don't realize you do that, but you do that, and Facebook has already picked up on those things. It's, it's kind of creepy. It's <laughs> it's like because they do it better than we can. Well, you already know that B- Big Brother is like watching everything anyway. Yeah, and your phone, regardless of where you're at, like your phone picks up whatever you're saying, whatever you're doing anyway. Mm-hmm. But face Facebook, it's kind of creepy too, though. I mean. Ev- everyone just kind of stalking you and <laughs> mm-hmm. taking your information and selling it uh, either individually or collectively with a bunch of other people so they know certain areas by the way that's not very pc it's big sibling now you don't you don't attribute a specific gender to the biggest of the brothers wow. it's the biggest of the siblings is it maybe I, i'm trying to <laughs> i'm trying to press my like 1984 man I, it's not supposed to be the rule book i'm, I'm <laughs> anticipating uh nomenclature changes oh. and so i don't know if that's a thing just yet wait wait but the sibling still you know wh- what if this is just you know the ai what do you call just the ai the ai what I, sex is the ai it's sexless there you go so it's just the the big watcher it's the watchers well siblings can like there's no gender attribution uh-huh. to a sibling. And so you could have the <laughs> non gendered sibling, the one who has neither an Yeah. You're making I, this way complicated. Petri, <laughs> petri dish sibling. Nineteen eighty four man. It's upon us. There was been for past. the last thirty depending on the country. <laughs> yeah. Um then you have if you're part of the Euro- if you're a citizen that is under the European Union I think it was like the 25th of March or April. It the law comes into effect that if you want your you can ask or ask anybody that you has your information for uh, what they have on you, and if you decide you don't like it, you can ask them to delete it. And by law, they have to. But on the other side, that means you can never use their stuff again because. You are getting it for free, and that is the idea of having that information. What if you break your word? Then they get to gather their, your information again because you signed another uh, user agreement to sign back up. So then what if you're like, well, I'm deleting it now. Can you? As, as long as you're a citizen that's under the European Union thing, you can del- you can say delete my information. You could log on, set up your account, and be like, actually, I changed my mind. Delete my information. So you can just go like a ping pong where you sign up for their services, then say, I changed my mind, delete it. And then as soon as they delete it, sign up for their services again. And, and sign just... another user agreement. They they might actually start cutting you off, though. Oh, there are consequences to... Well, there might be. Washing. Yeah. Huh. Of course, you know, on the other side, while they have your information, they can sell it as fast as they can. What if you have the modern consent issue where you sign up for it and just want them to pick up on your body language as far as, I don't really want this? Unfortunately, you signed the user agreement. Ah, well, that's not good. <laughs> no. <laughs> that you to, don't want to be part of it. They need to get up with the times. That's Well, that's technically, error. that's why as soon as you click, user agreement accepted. Huh. You have you've signed those user agreements, even you Luddite. Yeah. <laughs> uh, or my my online persona, at the very least, that I pay to be me. Is your online your offline? No. Well, oh, so Toys R Us. You heard about this? Kids are fun. No, no, no. Toys are fun. No. 
kids with toys are fun. They're going out of business? Yeah, I've heard that. Like, a lot of stores are going out. Oh, they're closing them. Like, it's not all, even... All of them? All of them. All of them are going, and the sales have started, but officially they're starting Thursday, the 22nd of March. Even their online presence will be gone? Everything's gone. It's crushed by the massive jackboot of Jeff Bezos. Well, except for I also, I would never, I don't buy things online unless I absolutely 110,000% know I don't, I actually want it. Because returning things to Amazon sucks. Does it? Yeah. They, you know, there's the restocking fee and then trying to figure out all the other stuff. What if I ordered the wrong size? What if, yeah, no. I don't want to, and plus, yeah, what if I buy pants? And they're just like weird. What do you want? Jack boots. So you they're can weird. crush stuff. They're weird. Yeah. What if they're weird? I have to pay to send them back. Yeah, really? it's not worth it. Well, because there's the restocking, or oh, you ordered this, so it's your fault. Mm-hmm. You know, if it's their fault, that's a different story. But do you ever write the message? The customer is always right. No, I just don't buy anything unless I know I beyond a doubt want it. You don't want to be the customer who's always writing. No, no, I'm good. <laughs> no, oh yeah, so Toys R Us going out of business. But do you guys remember KB Toys? Yes. They're coming back. <laughs> it's not KY Toys. No, it's KB Toys. Okay. You're old. You should remember them. No, I don't remember. You that. don't remember KB Toys. I had an impoverished childhood. They were perfect for the, the impoverished childhood. They were the cheap. I didn't even, this doesn't even have an image. I was hoping I'd have an image with KB Toys on this. Uh, I don't even know which one's making those. There we go. Somebody's making noise. All right. Uh, KB Toys. I'm sure a lot of people remember this. The company that went out of business way, way long time. They were in the, the Pocatello Mall, not the Chevick Mall. Remember this at all? Nope. No? All right, fine. I remember. Also, I, used, I used to play in the toy store there. <laughs> it's a good babysitter. <laughs> But they went out of business many years ago. But a company has been buying them up and or buying the, the name rights to it. And they are going to try to get around or try to be, have brick and mortar stores set up in time for the holiday season. So if you can't get to your Toys R Us in time, don't worry. KB Toy Store will probably buy it for you and then sell it to you. Okay. I have nothing witty or fascinating to say on this topic because I don't know anything about KB Toys other than what you just conveyed. They are basically Toys R Us. Actually, then it, uh, the thing is, I don't know how this could be long lasting. I, you know, being a brick and mortar and you know, having this these issues with it, I could see them being like a holiday store, maybe. Like we're selling these popular toys in a brick and mortar store for Christmas, and then. December 31st, we're out. <laughs> well, you know, they. this is just a suggestion for our massive KB Toys executive audience demographic, oh, wow. which I'm sure is there. I mean, I, obviously, they're everywhere. But, um, <laughs> Except for here in front of me, staring at me. Yeah. Luddite. Yeah. L- you, you never not even know. know. Bill, that's quite an <laughs> assumption. Luddite that doesn't even know, go to brick and mortar toy stores. Well, mortars <laughs> are dangerous. They're used in warfare. They're pretty. They were effective tools for a while. Or what was? Motars. Motars. What's motars? They, they are um, projectile weapons. Oh. They use them. Like, no, you don't. I don't even know where you picked that up from. Uh, as punning. Oh. Okay. So, um, <laughs> at any rate. If they just they just need some serious reband, rebranding, and I I'm just pitching that maybe instead of KB Toys, KY Toys to draw the older demographic. Maybe go. I can't even direction. get through a podcast without you making a joke like that. <laughs> I I'm just saying. Nope. We might nope. Reconsider. Nope. Okay. I said my piece. <laughs> I think it's really hard to actually sell toys though. Because, like, kids are not going to the mall like they used to. That's right. Well, and adults are getting 
less romantic these days anyway. So no, you see, you're not done. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. We're off that topic. All the technology and everything, though, has, like, been advancing over the years. And... Well, there's all those cool, you know, technology toys or pies and Arduinos. But if, if they don't keep up with the times, they're, they're going to phase out again. Well, well, but look how well Funko's doing. Funko? Just Funko. I am the not familiar. Heads. Funko Pops. Oh, those? Uh, all, the, all of my ginormous collection. Bobbleheads. and you know, They have so many. They have Star Wars. They have DC. They have Marvel. They're, they're like Lego. Uh, speaking of Lego, <laughs> this, these are the simplest in, of toys. They are right there, right next to stuffed bears. <laughs> Do you know if there's going to be a, a new way that they're actually marketing with KB Toys that way? Or... I'm if, sure there's, or if they're coming back the same way that they they originally. So there's everything. not a whole lot said about it yet. Just the fact that it is going to happen, and they have a plan to be out in time or before the holiday season. To actually have stores open before the holiday season. If if they if they sell video games and everything, I'm I'm sure that they would have a good market. Well, with except for that. KB, KB's toys used to uh, Toys R Us sold video games. I mean, there's only you know. You also run into the same problem that like McDonald's was having, where they were trying to they were making themselves too thin, trying to cover too many too much. <laughs> too thin McDonald's. Yeah. I I like well, they're they're covering so many bases, trying to compete with like Carl's Jr. All these specialty stores, so they're making all of this stuff. So it's you know it's actually been hurting them more than helping them. So it's better to keep it simple. Probably, I think so. It probably would. I guess we'll have to see how yeah. that works out. Because I can see like Amazon, you know, where they've expanded a lot, but they're they they and Google. Like I feel like these places have done well doing expand doing expansion, but they also all started off very simple to start slowly stepping out. I feel like brick and mortar places they can't well they can't be too specialized, otherwise they're Spencers, and there's like why there's your there's your call out there's your store okay. <laughs> But too general might be, you know. Well, there are ways, certainly, to lubricate sales. You said you were done. I, I was, that's <laughs> a, a good word to use. Okay. I'm not alluding to anything particular. Nothing, we nothing at all. <laughs> Just saying. If all right. Want, no, no. Stuff. Okay, okay. All right. I, th- I like this. The AIs are winning at Rubik's Cubes. Yeah, I can see that. Have you guys seen this? No, I haven't, but I believe it. It solved it in 0.38 seconds. It they, seems kind of slow. Well, they did, it is at quarter speed. Well, I mean, 0.38 seconds, like, my grandmother could do that if she were still... No. Solving in three, no. two. I really got to turn those off. Did you see it? Yep. They just, like, marked it. And... Well, if we can successfully fake a moon landing, I think we can <laughs> fake the solving of a Rubik's Cube. I'm sure it has all the algorithms it needs to be able to solve it really quickly. Well, especially a cube that size with a three by three by three. Um, well, the actual it, Rubik's cube, not the Rubik's, you know, hundred sided one. Well, <laughs> it, as long as it's cubed, it's fine. Like you know, three by three by three, or I four guess by four, four by four, thirteen by thirteen. Yeah, that, that, that <laughs> would be quite a cube. But um, yeah, there is a very simple algorithm in which anyone can learn to solve a Rubik's Cube. And anyone who has the inclination, it takes about, uh, depending on... I think you have to solve like one whole side first, and then everything else just kind of falls in, isn't it? Well, you want to do one side, and then you set it up so that there's a cross. And then there's some variation that is involved, depending on what the color of the cross is. Ah. And... uh, See yeah. if you could turn it fast enough, you you would have a chance at well, yeah, I beating mean, the the computer. Physically, absolutely, anyone who has proper determination can 
compete with 0.38 seconds. That, that's when you need to dream big because when they say if you dream it, you can do it. This is this is one of those dreams you can are, are, absolutely do. It. Are you Paul Bunyan? Is that what you're saying? I am Paul Bunyan. Yeah, it, that's Jordan versus the machines. That's right. Wait, no, you have to expound. Paul Bunyan with the the with, cow with blue the cow and his axe. Yeah, he was he took a. He, he was taking on against all the new machines that were coming out. That he was the fastest person who could chop down trees. He's the best lumberjack ever. And then the machines came around who could do a better job. Paul Bunyan was a Luddite. Yeah. Nice. Except for he also accepted defeat. Gracefully or with anger. Uh, he he did go up north, and that's where the Northern Lights come from. He he uh, he wrestles with blue. I I figured I, <laughs> it was mentioned once. I think one of my um, physics professor was like, "There's this legend of magnetism being the cause of northern lights, but it's actually Paul Bunyan." Yep. And I was like, "Yeah, okay." And a giant cow. Yeah, the cow's pretty essential. Yeah. Something to do with the udders. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No. I, it's it's not my words. It's it's. I, I think no, th- those around. are literally your words. There's a recording. They they happen to bounce. You know, right? It's my right words second. reciting the words of a very learned professor. I doubt that. I wouldn't <laughs> lie about northern lights. So, <laughs> Borealis, is, is, you know, no fib in there. Just gonna click through these. <laughs> that that's there we go. Jordan, you just, I don't know. Well, <laughs> my, my spiel on the Aurora Borealis. Okay, yeah. Well, I try to make sure that this is a reliable, very informed podcast that deceives no one. <laughs> I don't know I just clicked on. I clicked on the same link. <laughs> See, you're making me click on the same links. I'm out. <laughs> you publish the podcast. <laughs> All right, so so we've done Rubik's cubes that are allegedly solved by robots in 0.38 seconds, just like the moon has allegedly been landed on. What's next? What are you gonna throw at us, Bill? I said you're in charge. I'm in charge. Okay, you gotta pick something, either from the show notes or safe. From the safe part of your brain. Okay, yeah. Game Informer released recently the top 300 games ever made, and their number one game was A Link to the Past. And I think Alex would probably agree with that, but I think they listed Ocarina of Time on like 25 or something like that. But yeah. This is an interesting arrangement. Uh, I don't think they even had Final Fantasy VII on that list. So what do you guys say? What's the top game, top five games? Well, their website sucks at this. I might have to actually go get my Game Informer. Do we have it in here? Nope. It's upstairs. Did you look at the list? No, I didn't look at the list. I, that's what this is. It's like, here's, your to- here's the top 50 of them in no particular order. But we're selling them. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the magazine has them in particular order. and I don't know. I disagree with A Link to the... T- uh, what is it? A Link to the Past being the, the very tippy-toppy. The absolute best ever. It is not The Link to the Past. In the magazine that I got, it was. This 2018. Is- now you're going to make me go upstairs and... I dare you. I double dog dare you. I, although The Witcher Three is pretty awesome. All right, I'll be back. You guys have to talk. All right. Yeah, and they're saying The Last of Us, which again is pre- I like this list, in fact, better than the list in the magazine, which we shall shortly be graced with. What games would be on your top of your list? Ah, uh, yeah, Ocarina of Time. Ocarina of Time. And what about you? I like some of the Super Mario Brothers ones that would be on the top of my list. All right, throw one out. What's the best of them? The best of them? Yeah, what's the best of the best? I enjoy Super Mario World. It's a good one. They had for number two, Super Mario 3. 
or just Mario Brothers 3. Mario Brothers 3? Yeah. Actually, that one is actually a pretty good one. It's pretty good. They thought it was like number two of all games ever made. And so I think they thought it was pretty good. But you're Super Mario? Yeah. Did, I like... you, go, did you go full on completionist mode? I tried. <laughs> I have not successfully completed the games. Really? Yeah. Did you at least access the uh, extra world or the the one where every every character has the weird heads and everything? Weird even for that game is like Bill, have you played Super Mario World? Ooh, I on somebody else's computer. Or er. Uh, Nintendo. Yeah, ah. so so there's a disagreement as you see. Their their online information is maybe they're trying to have their cake and eat it too. They're like, we'll just have two lists. Yeah, they what they have online is totally different from what they have in the magazine. You know what it is? It's a conspiracy. Or is this just like the no, it's the exact same. Three hundred top three hundred reader's, readers choice. choice. That's is that the, the problem? editor's choice. Oh. Although, yeah. That might be why. the I was like, why am I having such a drastic difference? Okay, that's making way more sense, man. Yeah, they put... Well, I guess they have to go find that section in their magazine or in their online. I'm surprised Witcher 3 is actually on the top of all the games. Like, I love The Witcher 3, but... It's still kind of astonishing to see that regarded as the number one game. It looked but, like there was a picture of Jack and Daxter. I like that game. It's a good game. Apparently the readers of Game Informer agree. Bill, what's your number one game? Huh. Someone puts uh, a gun to your head for because they're irrational, I guess, and they're like, Bill... Unless you tell me your top game of all time, I'm going to pull the trigger. All time. There's, all there's time. so many choices. I know, but you have to pick one or there's a bullet. And headed your way. <laughs> headed. Uh, okay. Oh, man. They have some really good top 10, too. Wow. That is some good. Uh, they're top 13. I like 13. 13 makes sense, in my opinion. Yeah, but you can only choose one. No, Doom. Doom is number 13. <laughs> That's just great. Uh Okay, right, so did you did you also say the other ones? Did you get to remember all the top ten? I can't remember all the top okay, ten. Okay, number one is Legend of Zelda: Link to the Past. Two is Super Mario Brothers. Three. Three is Tetris. Mm. Four is Grand Theft Auto Five. Five is World of Warcraft. Or wow, <laughs> which was my reaction seeing it that high in the list. I don't know. I couldn't play more than like 10 minutes. Because it doesn't I've deserve to done. be that high on the list. Uh, Final Fantasy 6 was 6. 7 is Call of Duty 4, Modern Warfare. 8 is Red Dead Redemption. Which game. is also, if you notice the outside of the cover, what they're also advertising. I observed that. Red Dead Redemption 2 has been has, a, has been announced and it's all sorts of funness. Uh, 9. Okay, so this... For a PC game, I think that's the other problem. Is I have problems with for a PC game and console game. It's this one, number nine, Elder Scrolls. Ah, oh, yeah, okay. Five, Skyrim. Five. That's your game. Skyrim. I enjoy Skyrim. I, that's what got me into Elder Scrolls Online. I like Skyrim. I like Elder Scrolls Online. I like I, Elder Scrolls. I don't disagree with you. I I love Elder Scrolls, and so that's a fine choice for PC. But I've been getting into phone games lately because. They're so much easier to do. I mean, was it the uh, um, Player Unknown? It's a first, per, uh, or no, not Player. Yeah, Player Unknown. It's a there's a first person shooter. Where you run around, shoot people. Also, rules of survival. Do people know who you are? I'm unknown. They know my username though. Oh, well, that defeats the purpose, doesn't it? Yeah. If you kill them now, then. It accomplishes the purpose. So I found out if in Player Unknown, the mobile one, you uh, it's, I feel like there's more to this. The name of the title than that. Um, 
But if you are player known battlegrounds, that's what it is. Have you guys seen this advertised all? That looks familiar. He's wearing a gnarly hat. It doesn't look comfortable at all. Kind of looks like a welder's thing. But they released it onto. It's one. Um, do you know Fortnite? I've heard of it. Okay, never mind. Uh, Did we not discuss Fortnite? Yeah, on the missing episode. Half a Fortnite ago. Did I just say Fortnite? Fortnite. Yes. Okay. Half a Fortnite ago on the podcast that self deleted itself. Yeah. Uh, Sucks when that happens, but so this is a you get so I like I like the phone games because and I like that they're getting they're not just these click games but they're actually getting more involved and my phone can you know my phone is as powerful as computers and all this. Oh no, I think most mo- I have most... an octa core processor in my phone. I have a phone more powerful than any of my computers. Do you find satisfaction in that? I am actually disappointed because I should have better games on it. Huh. You feel you have not encountered a game that is... I know most of the games, and also games that don't run on the phone, they, they're just screwing them up. You know, they're, because, like, this is a decent game. It works well. You run around. Uh, you, you know, it's a, you're against, like, 200. It's, uh, you all get dropped. 200 players get dropped onto this island, and Last Man Survives. It's a lot of fun, but I also get to pull out my phone. I can just play it around with it. I don't have to, like, pull out my laptop, pull up the console. You know, it's just simple. Okay. So, I'm Should still I... fixed on that guy. So, do you think, like, is there a cutscene that gently introduces his background and why he's wearing a helmet like there that? There is no story, background story. He's just totally unknown? He is unknown. See? He just So, your left uh, thumb... So it's it's like holding a controller, but you can also look at the controller. Your your left thumb, and that's the thing is I'm kind of torn between whether uh, player known battleground or rules of survival is better. Better, I think I like rules of survival, and they're about to do a massive um, world competition, which actually is sounding like a lot of fun and really interesting to play. See how other pl- uh, players play, because I did pretty well in uh, player unknown. And the next time I jumped in, I was, uh, or no, or, uh, or next, they try to get you to play the multiplayer group. So they threw me instantly into the multiplayer. But I was, it was enjoyable. What are the rules of survival? Shoot others before they shoot you. Keep it simple, I guess. Yeah. I'm going with that. Put, put on armor, you know, make, when they shoot you, you know, a little bit harder to kill. Do you make friends with them or try to? You do could. You, I mean, you can become. You could either have other friends, like you know, some of the Facebook games, or the other on, you know, you know, just online games. You can like, if you had a smartphone, <laughs> if Anna wanted to join, how about that? No, I showed you my smartphone. I just never use it. Oh, okay. You have your your dual life phone. Are there like different maps with that game? Where um, that this particular one. Player known on the mobile one. I'm sure the online or the PC one might be more. The mobile one, it's only the one map. If there's more, I haven't seen them yet. Um, rules survival. There are two main maps, and there's also, but there's multiple types of modes. Whether you go solo, um, uh, dual team, squad. Uh, so I think up to like four or five players on one team. I like solo because then I also don't feel bad if if I suddenly like forget how to play. <laughs> I'm like I only killed myself, not my team. Or if I don't have to wait for somebody else to. I, apparently, I'm not a very good uh, team player, especially with people I don't know well. Though I have had some good team games where we all were working together, and we all because usually people like scatter. That's the other thing that sucks is when you're on a team and everyone's on the four corners of the map. But also, like, the map starts shrinking down. What's called, like, the storm is coming in. And there's mo- there's a lot of games like this that are coming out on the phone now. But the storm comes in. It forces everybody to go to the se- to a center point. And it's not always the same center point. It's just it chooses where it starts centering down. So everyone has to eventually, you know, the final people have to eventually meet up. Yeah, that's a problem when when 
the, when it gets stormy, then usually trouble comes. You <laughs> you felt like you, I I was looking at you. You're just like I've been holding on to this for so long. There are so many ways to say it. I feel like I chose the worst one. I don't feel like you could have had any good one. There, there's a there's a good one. No. But okay, so okay, so it's like but okay, it's so like the player when you play it on your phone, the your left thumb controls you're running backward you know, the direction you run or move. Your right one is your view. I have to admit that rules of survival driving a vehicle is way better, like miles above it better. Uh, player unknown, you have these like arrows, and unless I can go in and try to change the UI, the player unknown, you could, or I mean, rules of survival, you have a lot of ability to change how the setup is of your controller, and you can also dim the buttons so they don't block your view. Uh, player unknown, when you hop in a vehicle, you have like a forward and backward button and a left and right button. And you have to push them. So which means when you're driving a vehicle, you can do okay. But then you need to turn. You like push the right button and suddenly you take a 90 degree turn off the cliff. <laughs> have you ever had someone reach over and take your controls and your response is to say, don't push my buttons? I feel like you were trying really, really hard to like find the greatest pun or greatest joke. I'm just, <laughs> it's been a long day for me. I, I'm just throwing them out there. I. I don't know. I'm I'm on auto drive, which doesn't make sense because you're not on auto drive. You actually actively have to drive in player unknown. So yeah, disregard yeah. that. And rules of survival. You and ru- rules of survival. Uh, you you can auto run. You can auto run. You can you would use you push your your thumb stick forward. Well, your your moving stick. You push your left thumb thumb forward, and it'll you have this in. Player known, you have this button that pops up, and if you push forward more, or you move your thumb up the screen more, you can touch it, and it locks you going forward. In Rules of Survival, you actually see this lock fill up, and as soon as it locks, you can let go with your left hand, and then you can just like run around, so you can just play different, you know, with you know, relax your left hand a little. Bill, you know what they call a computer that determines whether you're banned or not? Google? Autobahn. No, that would be the interstate. <laughs> You're right. really, really, really trying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Awesome. I'll, I'll give you like a solid D plus. D plus? No, that's not solid. Solid D plus. Okay, solid From D. From A to Z. Solid D. How about that? Okay. Uh, yeah, we so we uh, we did talk about some of these last week. Very so. discouraging. Um, I I still am enjoying. There, and I'm looking. Oh, there's also a new Dragon Ball Z game or Dragon Ball game coming out, which they're doing something like Kickstarter. Like the more people that sign up before the game comes out, we're gonna make sure to have special characters in the game. I'm like, really? I wish they had the um, what is it? The not Guitar Hero Rock, Rock Band, Rock Band, Dragon Ball Z version, because then everyone could just do their like variations that'd be pretty cool have goku roaring and then his arch nemeses they're roaring back at him and you're controlling the the roars pitch tone and variation did you say witcher was number one on the other one or two witcher was number nine on there or ten on theirs yeah because they suck apparently sorry i'm changing back to the other subject what did they say the witcher three yeah same one I don't know. Well, actually, I guess I didn't change. I was still just kind of expanding on. I'm liking where mobile games are going. Well, it's interesting that. that and I would play Elder Scrolls on my phone if I could. Huh. Sorry, go ahead. Well, uh, I'm just saying the readers of Game Informer seemed more informed than the editors of Game Informer because, yeah, there you are. There's Final Fantasy VII. You have Red Dead Redemption is roughly at the same spot. But Bioshock's pretty good. Bioshock. I disagree with that. Like, I, I think Infinite Actually, is Well, this better. is Redemption. Oh, you like the... Wait, which one's Redemption? I might be mixing up. That's that, that's um, number eight. On oh, list. whoops. Sorry. That's Red Dead Redemption. Oh, yeah. Um, but, oh, yeah. No, I think I like the second one better than the first one. Bi- or for Bioshock? I haven't played the second one. Or is it the third one? No, I'm thinking them up. I mean the okay. third one. Infinite was uh, one with the... Um, the time 
multiple dimensions element. Yes. Okay. I did enjoy that one. So we're in agreement. Yeah, I I agree. I never played the second one actually. Yeah. So we're yeah, where our experiences yeah. seem the same. I haven't played Bloodborne. I hear it's. Uh, it, it looks like it's uh, directed by Quentin Tarantino. Oh, because of the uh, mass amount of blood splats. <laughs> actually, you know. Ooh. Oh, I forgot about that. Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic. That's a great game. Yes, definitely a top ten. Uh, one is... of the first ones for like good guy, bad guy uh, choices. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not probably not the first. I'm Star not sure. Star Wars games, at least. Like, yeah. I don't know about the first, but I know at least one of the first for good guy, bad guy. Actually, I think um, Jedi Knight. They they did the good or bad um, before, that. and also X wasn't didn't uh is x wings didn't they do i don't like, know you could work for that i think you're forced to work for the empire because the rebels don't have x wings so hmm. at any rate the readers wait are awesome. rebels don't have x wings that's the empire they they come in terrorize hmm. everyone with x their wing is the, the shape that's the that's what the I rebels they're fly. specifically um refer to as the bulbous, like they they have the sort of bulbous body and then the X shaped wing. See, that's an X wing. That is the rebels. Okay, I I thought they. No, you're thinking of the uh, like what Vader flew. I can't believe I don't know what it is. There's another one. That's another. Sh- it's another letter, no. different. Well, I stand corrected. I, I just felt like only the Empire had uh, X-Wing starfighters. At any rate... You're talking like that thing, right? Or are you talking the... Oh, I was totally off. Like, my memory serves me <laughs> no... TIE no, Fighter. Yeah. That's what I was trying to think of. TIE Fighters. Okay. Yeah, and those are definitely not X-Wings. So. No. All right. I was, I was incorrect. Mea culpa. <laughs> Mea maxima culpa. So, yeah. Game I recommend playing those games, though. Yeah, actually, that's something else. I, there is no mobile games on this, is there? No. That is actually kind of a disappointment, especially... That's, actually, they have The Room. They what? I believe that's a mobile game. The um, Room? It's uh, is published in 2012, 2013. It's like a Lovecraftian puzzle game. It's clear near the end. I think it's in the 200s. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. That's why I was also thinking about getting Skyrim on uh, the uh, Switch. Because yeah, I might people, be willing to play that game on a mobile. Street Fighter 2, that's a good game. Yes, it is. Diablo 2. I never... I, I couldn't get into Metroid. I tried. I really did. A lot. Overwatch is on the list. Overwatch probably should be higher because many people like it. Well, many people like Mario. Actually, they don't know, which one were you asking about earlier? Super Mario what? The world, you were saying? Uh, asking whom? You asked me if I had played. Uh, I'm sure you asked. Uh, yeah, Super Mario World. Okay, I have played. Yeah, I played that one. It's just been forever. All right. So Portals was a really short game. It was short but satisfying. Good for its time. And good for this time, too. And Yeah, Ocarina. It should be way up there. Like That is one of the greatest games of all time. Well, there's also all these games that, like, redesigned the genre or something like that. Yeah, nothing like Ocarina. <gasps> Mike Tyson's Punch-Out! Come on, that's a great game. Yeah, it is. Number 48. Yeah. Secret of Mana. So, it's a bevy of games that I like, but I'm not not entirely in agreement with their order. Oh, yeah. Baldur's Gate 2. That's my favorite RPG. No. One of my favorite RPGs. See, and I, 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 I don't know, because I also enjoyed, like, old side-scroller Doom and Jazz Jackrabbit and... Jazz Jackrabbit? Jazz Jackrabbit. I've never heard of that. Uh, Jazz Jackrabbit was awesome. I've never heard of it either. It's it is of the same. It came out the same time period as like side scrolling Duke Nukem. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, this is this is like yeah, ninety four is the last one I think. Great graphics. This is yeah, just a, a total goofy colored side scroller. Oh, I can't even get to load up right. It kind of reminds me of Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, I'll go with that. But a lot more colorful. Yeah, that's, you know, it's Sonic. Like the old style set scroller, even like Mario and all that. I played it on, like, uh, let's see, what was it? 386? Like Windows 3.x. So he has a. Oh, they came out with a three a newer version, that does not look good at all. Jazz Jackrabbit. He has a rabbity girlfriend. I don't know. It looks like it. There's a figurine right there. I yeah, I don't know. I think about that. That's I just remember running, and you're right. It's very much like, you know, Sonic. Well, that's a disturbing message because uh, it's kind of racist. Shouldn't he go for like perhaps a mouse, which. You know, it, it's more open. I have sending, no clue where you're going. Sending the wrong message to you. Obviously. Me. Again, it's been a long day. I'm just saying. I, I'm, I'm saying you're done. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's an old classic game. It came on old computers. It came with, you could get for old computers. The style of the characters, they kind of remind me of Tiny Toons in a way. Oh, like, yeah. The, the bunny ears, like Buster Bunny, mm-hmm. but with like a, just kind of a gun. But he's like, that character looks interesting because he's green, though. Yeah, it's like old school Duke Nukem. Before they went to what we now know and hate. <laughs> love, love, hate, depending on how you want to go with that. I haven't played either of these games. Yeah, I know they're old. I wonder if there was... Duke Nukem 3D came out and then kind of... It did well. Did the original have, like, pixelated nudity? Oh, yeah. I forgot that that was built into some of the... Well, that was in 3D. I don't remember the old one. Because that would be pretty awesome. Not sure. Let's go with that. Uh... Do you know the backstories of either of these games? Duke Nukem is, uh, I think it was Martians came and invaded the planet, and he had to save the world from uh, uh, pigs and other invading monsters. Isn't he also supposed to be like a particle physicist? I don't remember. (laughs) He looks like one. Of course. He kind of looks like a mobster to me. Yeah, well, you know, mobsters, particle physicists. They're kind of the same group. Yeah, like Duke Nukem Forever came out in 2011. The most, the, the largest anticipated biggest letdown game ever. There's a game called Balls of Steel. That looks interesting. Wolfenstein 3D. That's a classic. Yeah, we're just going through all these retro games. See, there's some really cool ones out there. And they don't have any Facebook games in here. How dare they? There was some great Facebook games. Like what? Like the Island Adventure one where you would... uh... Actually, what reminded me of it was... uh... Where'd it go? It was like Farmville or whatever it was. Animal Crossing. It reminds me of a Facebook game. I liked Animal Crossing. You can plant things, you can pick up seeds, or you can like go fishing, or you can just kind of cut grass or <laughs> build a house, buy other items to like have your character wear. Exactly. Exactly how Facebook games worked. So, do you cross animals? I, where no, why, why'd the chicken cross the road? Because it had to get to the other side. Because we're at the end of the podcast. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you guys play Crossy Road? Crossy Road? Yeah, it's a little bit like Frogger, but it's like a, a game that you can play directly on your phone as a phone app. And 
it's actually a lot of fun because like every as you pass every level you get you can pick up coins in the level and then you can open up other characters as you're going through huh but it's a lot of fun it looks like it could be fun i would probably waste so much time on this yeah. i was thinking of like i don't know i i feel there's a certain void in the market of mobile games i I, I don't really have the technical prowess, but I, I feel like a good idea for a game is, and you guys will have to tell me if um, I'm on to something. So you're a surgeon who's performing surgeries like uh, uh, heart surgeries and you're removing uh, organs and everything like that. And you're not exact exactly licensed and it's not in a hospital. <laughs> <laughs> black market surgeries well it's not for any sale you're collecting organs black market murderer surgeon <laughs> and you have to evade the police and so the game is basically trying to refine your talent so that you can so you're, know... you're saying you want to become jack the ripper so yeah but in modern times and so like people may accuse this game of training serial killers and being totally irresponsible or whatever. Yeah, I think you got you went too far left. Do you, do you, you went think you went too far off the rails. I, really? That's not a good game. I don't think that would be a good game, but Ooh. I have played Amateur Surgeon and that's a lot of fun. Because this game really it tell you how to successfully <laughs> He really wants to sell this game. <laughs> yeah. So it tells you how to make the incisions and everything like that, leave no evidence behind. So if you're really interested in making this game you can contact Jordan, tell him that you're taking it from him, and you can make it because he's not making it. Well, it, it, the odds are kind of bleak. I, I admit that. But I feel like there's a market for this game. I, I found your game. N number number 93, Bully. There you go. Bully. Bully. That's a good game. Never played it. It's a great game. Never played. I'm just going to keep upgrading my evaluation. It is a, a stupendous game. <gasps> How dare this game be so low in this number? The Oregon Trail is 104. That's the name of my game, The Oregon Trail. You leave no trail of <laughs> organs. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, I feel like there's potential here. The Oregon Trail is a classic. I know. Every, you know. Just a, a genre, an age of people coming up with computers that had lots and lots of experience with, you know, lots and lots, many hours spent at the library on ga these games, and or I, you owned a computer, personal computer. I recall my entire family died multiple times because I made it happen purposefully. You, you you brought the dysteria or dis, is it, they're dysentery. Yeah, they're like you should hunt and your so your family doesn't starve and I was like, it'll be fine. It never was. How are your hunting <laughs> skills? Abysmal. Well if he didn't hunt, then that means that he wouldn't know. Well, of course that mean it probably means you actually really do suck at it if you never hunted, so Yeah. Bejeweled. Bejeweled is on this list. Come on. What number? Hundred and seventy six. I'll admit it. It is kind of it's an an original type. But all I can think of is like sitting at a bar and popping a quarter into a machine to play it. <laughs> Bomberman. That's a good game. It's very topical now. <laughs> EverQuest, one of the original MMO RPGs. Yeah. Yeah. That. I never played that, but I, I know that many marriages were ruined because of that game. Guitar Hero's pretty low. 177. Zork. Oh my goodness. Zork is on this list. That is an epic game. Is it? I I haven't played it. Zork. You know what it looks like? Text going across your screen. Cause you have lots and lots of reading. So you have to... It says, you are in a dark alley. Your exits are front and back. And there's a lock. Uh, there's a, a piece of paper on the ground. What are you gonna do? Interesting. And then you type in, look at paper. Wrong command. <laughs> pick up paper. I don't understand. Pick up. 
Like it really happened to it, you had to really learn what words you could use. <laughs> Where the huh? That sounds like it would be very frustrating. It was. Okay. Did you guys ever play Journey? Yeah. It's such a pretty game. Oh yeah, that was actually on the list. I wonder I what part of the list it's on, because it's actually a really, really pretty game. I think it's in the hundreds. Yep, there it is. Seventy nine. Oh, okay. It was next. I was like, I saw that one. So it's bejeweled a uh, phone game. Well, you know, I kind of disagree again with this list because Shadow of the Colossus is behind Journey. And as much as I like uh, Journey, seeing Shadow of Colossus, even looking at it on this list, I'm getting uncomfortably aroused. Pitfall. I love that game. I made maps for that game. Commodore 64 and old classic Nintendo NES. Yeah, I remember. I, I fell a lot. Kelt came out in 82. Yeah, this is bringing specs to memories. Is it sort of like a flashback? Nostalgia. It's making me excited for uh, what's it called coming out. Um, yeah, what's Ready it? Player One. I'm so, excited. In the month. Is it? This yeah, month? comes out this month. The last okay. day, of, last release day of the month. Actually, it might have been the last day. Given Spielberg his much needed money. Well, okay, not being the last day. It's like the 29th night. I think he kind of needs a success after his. It is not movies. been having bad. Well, okay, overall it's good. People who are saying the bad things have not persuaded me at all with the idea of it's lots of nostalgia. Okay, still not selling me away from it. Right. It, it, it's very bright because of it's VR. Yep, expect that from VR. Not selling me away from not getting me away from it. Kind of selling me on it more. It's shiny and the puzzles have lots of nostalgia. Great. What you want to keep selling this to me? <laughs> yeah, no. I'm, I'm I'm in. Really, <laughs> I, I don't see you not liking this. I, when when I saw the um. Well, after reading the book and when I saw the um, the trailer for the movie, I, I, I felt kind of convinced. It, it seemed coincidental at the very least, but it was almost like Steven Spielberg. He had a moment where he's like, I wonder what Bill Martin would like <laughs> to watch, and then made that movie. So, yeah, I, I feel like you'll, you'll enjoy this. Yes. All right. Let's wrap things up. Famous last words. Um, Go. Okay. My famous last words are goodbye. Send us a message about your top game. Where can we send that? You can send it to geeksrewired at gmail.com or you can call us 801-896-4335 or you can uh, give us or some support on Patreon and get access to our Discord and chat with us. And that's uh, patreon.com slash geeks are wired.